We will Rek'Sai make it through all of these questions we're about to find out. Find out on the next episode of Champ Select. <laughs> now, all right, the Unicorns open up with the Draven Band, not too big a surprise, and Copenhagen Wolves immediately telling the Unicorns, you are not playing Kog'Maw today. Okay. Copenhagen Wolves need to decide. That was a statement. On their second, the second ban, <laughs> Zia is removed. Cassio becomes more likely. Is one of the possibilities. Paris. <laughs> Copenhagen Wolves don't like poke, Trevor. So far, they don't. Well, this means we might actually six. get that bloodbath game you're talking about. Zerath still a possibility Zerath, as well. Six, a lot of poke left. Wolves really don't like that. But, but importantly, LeBlanc up, Rek'Sai up, Gragas up. So all of these other picks, Urgot as well, which Freeze has run, and Bardax has won as well. Uh, played, rather. Uh, I like this reactionary ban because Callista's out. Mm. Goes up in market value. Sivir goes up in market value and now. Rek'Sai third ban uh, by the Copenhagen Wolves, which says, yeah, Unicorns, you seem to want that Cassiopeia, but if you do, we will get a tier one jungle in return. Um, if we pick it. Or apparently Gragas is no longer tier one after his slight nerves and Copenhagen Wolves go for the Evelyn and the Maokang. Uh, a lot of times young, but early picks now. It's interesting you say that because with that sort of weight loss on the body slam from Gragas this patch, Cabochard took him top lane. Airwax opts to go for the Evelyn, which of course helped him win against SK last week. And Unicorn's we reply, Rise and Siva. We forgot about Rise totally here. Wolves not ready to pick that up, and Unicorns like it. Uh, no Yorick to supplement this Cassiopeia unless the illustrious support Yorick comes out. Or, it, or jungle Yorick. It's been it done before. Has been done before. Wouldn't be the too bad with this triple carry composition. A lot of damage on Unicorn side. That is most decent amount of CC as well. Huni Max W in this game, not Q. To remember that. Soren uh, hovering some more damage on his side with the Victor. Trying to remember as well. Was it also a rise into Maokai matchup for Fnatic? Yes, it was. Today. Twisted Advance came out on Huni first, blew his flash. There we go. Follow up by the Gragas jungle, killed him. And we saw how effective Rise was with the tier plus blasting wand, shredded Maokai in lane over and over. The reply from Copenhagen Wolves, everybody's locking their role. Soren's decided with Cassidy. Freeze has decided with Lucian. Both respectively their first picks on these champions this split. Yeah, channeling is inner for Given, picking up the Lucian while Draven and Callista are out. Not opting for the Urgot. Copenhagen Wolves, it has to be mentioned. Very low on wave there so far. I'll have to find out how they handle that. A lot of importance on the early game. But you feel like Cassio's gonna push you in, Sivir's gonna push you in. Maybe Rise a little Rise will push you in with jungle pressure. And we'll see where the jungler comes in. Unicorn still have to lock in. Gragas is available if Kikas wants to go that route. Uh, it looks like it will be the case. I must mention as well, Hillisang's Morgana. A big reason why the Unicorns of Love made it to the finals in Madrid in the spring split. He just really had a fantastic series of games. Yeah, great Morgana player. Really clutch Black Shields, good bindings. The Bard hover. Is it good here? It's always good, Trevor. What are you saying? It's, it's always good. Of course it's good. <laughs> what are you saying? Okay, why Bard would be fantastic if Sivir wasn't in the picture is because you have an immobile or low mobility, if you want to nitpick. Low mobility, Cassio, low mobility, rise to an extent that you can throw that Bard ulti on top of, close the gap and immediately blow them up. Could be done here. Not sure what else is open that he wants to pick. Well, Nautilus is available if he wants to go that route, but Black Shield makes that life a little difficult. All right, going back to the Unicorn's comp here. Um, Rise synergizes relatively well with Sivir because he can get to positions where he can dish out a, a lot of damage and kite people. Cassiopeia, not necessarily. Like She has enough mobility on her own if she lands her spells, and she's she won't, may, might want to get away from certain players like Youngbug, but on the hunt's not going to solve that. Bard is locked in here. One thing that you have to keep an eye out is Kikis on his Gragas. He's the one tank in Unicorns of Love's this game. And he will have to get really tanky on his own. Like claim those black shields. As on the Wolves, 
Arax wants to flank yet again. We've seen Maokai and Evelyn so many times together uh, to varying degrees of success. And putting it lightly, I think, Crepo. Yeah. But Arax has been successful with it already. I'm interested to see the second Bard player here in Europe, Unlimited, and what sort of synergy he's going to have with Freeze, especially if he gets uh, the 2v2 lane, which I think Unicorns might be happy with. We saw how good that Rise into Maokai matchup was. Yeah, lane swap would speak in the Wolves' favor, I imagine, because you slow down the Rise a lot in his build path. And he's a hyper, hyper late game carry, so you don't want to let him scale that easily. So you want to slow him down. You want to get that tier later, the Catalyst later, and most importantly, you want, don't want him to hit that Rod of Ages as we're loading into the game right now. A very low wave clear, a lot of pressure coming out from the Unicorns early if Power of Evil on Cassiopeia pushes in that cast in there. Um, see how that pushes out. Yeah, lane swap would definitely help with that as well. If you have these high pressure situations, you definitely want to lane swap away and just trade towers as we saw earlier. Um, basically go, you know, tower for tower. Well, let's see if the lane swap comes into play, Crepo. As Unicorns of Love versus the Copenhagen Wolves it is the final day game of the day here in week two. And your 15th game in a row, Crepo. Definitely welcome to the caster desk in yeah. hard mode, that's for sure. Pardon me if I get a little repetitive sometimes. But I'm happy to have you here, especially because Bard is in the game. I believe it was game five that was barred last week as well. So maybe this is a Good trend. Good guy, LCS teams. Just when my energy starts dipping, they just want to revitalize <laughs> me with a bar pick, and I'm loving it. We'll see how effectively Unlimited can play as Kikis is trying to get some vision. It looks like it's going to be, once again, a standard defensive fan. Ah, uh, rookie mistake, Unlimited. Picking up, going for those chimes early. Tell me why it's a rookie mistake. Because they give you mana. No, it's actually not a rookie mistake if you're lane swapping allied. Oh, okay. Experienced bard player knows that he will not get those chimes anytime soon on the bot lane. It's actually sad if you if you if you think the average bard level goes up in Europe, then Minions taking chimes gone. early will indicate a lane swap. And the <laughs> thing unicorns did not see unlimited take those chimes, or they would have known that he's lane swapping. The mind games start already. With those champs, fantastic champion, Riot. <laughs> done an incredibly good job on this. Ah, uh, Crepo, I genuinely have never seen you happier than when you talk about Bard. It's like you're in love. I love the champion. So, let's see how this lane swap plays out. Top laners holding the hands of the respective junglers. We did see a Gromp Ward as Hillisang and Vardags moved up, so a little extra vision on the side of Unicorns of Love. Yeah, usually any bard lane doesn't like doing camps and wants to stop the enemy as well, so Unicorns could have sniffed it as well, seeing that there's nobody coming to stop their double golems. Uh, they didn't get any advantage, they didn't freeze the bot lane either, so they're reacting pretty late to the lane swap. Hillisang's looking to interfere a bit, Arox saved the smite, they did wolves first, but he didn't smite, and that's... That's what you have to do. You save your smite for the contestable buff, then you take two camps, not three. You don't want any shenanigans right there. Two is enough. You want to get out of there, split up the map again. Both teams uh, start on the weak side, but no punishes there. Well, I'm happy to see Power of Evil back on Cassiopeia. This was one of his signature champions coming into the LCS in the spring splits. And he's pushed the wave in, as you touched on, and picked some bands, Crepo. Soren's dropping a lot of CS here, already five CS behind, and this is exactly how this matchup plays out. Jungle and top laners are still busy clearing, because we know where the jungle and the top laners started. Power Evil has a good idea of where they are right now, what their speed's gonna be is. If he's well aware of it, he'll start leaning to the right side of his lane soon enough, potentially ward his left side. Ooh, cannon minion was missed. Oh, crowd. Crowd, the crowd did not approve of that one. Freeze for all of the hype and for all of the performance. Got to get them CSs. So 4v0 again, as we are seeing uh, a mixed amount, I feel. It's very, it's very common weeks. when you don't have any wave clear yourself and you want to speed up that early game to get through that rough patch. Uh, good move on the Wolves' side, and UOL is pretty much forced to do the same thing right now unless they already did 
What other teams sometimes do is send three people there to stop it, but then you have the risk of getting dove. Uh, both teams opt to uh, do a gentleman straight. And this time, unlike last week, we see the waves being bounced back. And this is an improvement. Last week, Copenhagen Wolves did not do this. I got mildly angry. We're seeing a roam here from a limited level three on Power of Evil. He might be overstand a bit too much. Well, let's find out. He manages to get a little movement speed oh, increase. Spotted it. Slither his way away. But the next question, will freeze freeze? Because last week on the Urgot, um, didn't can't. really do a whole lot. This time he can't freeze because the wave bounced away from him. Well, okay. Unless he, and unless you're a psychic and you pushes it in, resets it, and then freezes it away on this very elongated lane. Don't think that's going to happen. Lucian, aggressive early. Uh, carry double pickaxes picked up. Swapped away. Copenhagen Wolves go back to the original. Uh, lane set up to AD carry on bot lane. UOL, they send their carry to the top lane. So looks like these teams want to trade a couple more towers. Keep this rise down. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on how these lanes continue to play out. Magical journey was used. Speed a little bit closer to the lane. Now I like, as I said before, Bard into the rise because he's, he's not that mobile. So if you connect the Q slow, Lucian can dash in, do some damage. However, Rise Morgana is not to be underestimated as a 2v2 pairing. If you can, back in the day where lane swaps were a lot, a lot more common with Rise, pairing your support with Rise is dangerous for the enemy team. You have a snare. Usually, the supports in that meta game had a lot of CC. Gragas is coming in on here as well, and we might see that bloodbath we were hoping for so much. Well, definitely what we're looking for. Unicorns of Love, remember, secured one kill and gave up four deaths before 15 might minutes. It might get punished here. Let's take a look. Body Slam does not connect, and you can see the 510 changes in action. Get fit with Gragas, definitely punishing him a little bit there. Lost, like you said, that weight on the Body Slam. The collision radius was reduced. Return gank here, Arax. Sniffing out Vardex. There is a teleport coming in from Young Buck. Vardex is trying to put damage onto Young Buck. We do see Mr. Chachi. He's going to pick up first blood there with the rise. It will be Airwax going down. And that's a double kill for Visit Chachi. Visit Chachi with a double kill on the hyper late game rise carry. This is why you don't go for that play because teleport come, can come in. You are forced out of your battle lane. You can't cancel it. Unicorns, meanwhile, grouping on the mid lane. Everybody wants to force him out and does not connect and pressure everywhere from the unicorns and already a thousand five hundred gold lead. Well, magical journey unable to secure the kill. And we do see Bardex and Chachi. Ooh. Arcane smash, not this time round. Three just, commentators this just, time. Just, just you really the crowd. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, crowd's got a good amount of energy today, that's for sure. I just realized I said Young Buck was teleporting in. Chachi was teleporting in. It's been a long, long day. You were just day. glancing into the future. There we go. Young Buck teleported back to top lane. Let's Scarlet take a look Crab. at the CS there. 32 in favor of Young Buck to the 14 of Chachi, but obviously double kill. And of course, we see Power of Evil farming up a Storm versus Sorin. And look into what that translates. If we go back to the champ select where we said, yes, you want to lane swap. Why? Because you want to delay that tier. You want to delay that catalyst. Didn't happen. Two kills on Chachi. If you want any kills in the early game on any champion, Yes, Power Evil and Cassiopeia can be destructive and he can snowball, but on that rise, you secure your ticket into the mid to late game already this early into the game and fantastic start for the Unicorns. Well, we'll see if they can continue to capitalize because Hooney's rise went very, very far ahead. After starting 0-2. Yeah. Wonder what a rise can do when he starts 2-0. Find out on the next episode of LCS. Yes, exactly. <laughs> See, what unicorns can do here is actually sacrifice a dragon and do a, a CLG-esque approach where they freeze the lane for their top laner and it wouldn't actually be that bad because Ryze is such good scaling. The lane is pushed in here, taken back off. I wonder if Chachi is going to freeze that or not. All right, we'll check in that in just a second. Vardags and Helisang, they were forced to back away. We saw Vardags pick up that very early Avarice Blade. So, going to slow down his first item spike, but speed up his second as he works his way towards the Shiv and IH. Copenhagen Wolves are a thousand gold down. Yeah, I would like this. Defend. If the Wolves, the Wolves want to fight. They want to fight 5v5 at the Dragon, something where they can use the fact that Chachi is uh, not that mobile, doesn't have that much tankiness just yet, only one Ruby Crystal worth in all those items because he has a lot of mana. If I already keep the top lane frozen and they, they Wander around the dragon, don't really commit 4 or 5v4 too much, but 
stall Copenhagen Wolves from starting it. We saw it earlier, Youngbuck left that top lane, didn't push in the wave entirely, and we've been talking about this for a while, and meanwhile that lane is still in the exact same spot, and this is one of the times we actually do like to freeze because the opportunity, the cost is just too high for the Wolves. Yes, they might get a cost map objective in that Dragon, but the farm just goes to Chachi, and uh, look at that CS gaps getting closer and closer on top of those two kills. Yeah, and both of these teams happy to play the slow game. As we hit 10 minutes, you can see those tiers need to stack. Those catalysts on the side of Copenhagen Wolves, they need to be converted to Rod of Ages. So almost every single one of these solo laners, uh, rather Rod of Ages and Righteous Glory, of course, um, they're looking to convert, they're looking to upgrade those items. Now, 2v1, Fizza chachi has got access to his ultimate. Young Buck does have that vengeful maelstrom. And we can see Airwax toying with the idea. Look at how scared Airwax is of Chachi here. They, they're committing two members to a potential gank, but they don't need. They were ready. They could have went for that play, but they're so afraid of the rise already in the game that they don't want to go for that play. They lose a dragon, and nothing is happening here. Airwax if is you're not going to go for that play, if you're not going to go for that kill, then why are you there? This is such a big difference as well. Airwax against SK Gaming was incredibly aggressive. He was in, in SK's face over and over and over, and now he's running scared. He's literally playing a mobile ward, looking at Chachi and saying, here he is, there he is, he's still here, and the opportunity cost is very high. Yeah, hesitation is the seed of defeat, and if this keeps going on, then Copenhagen Wolves are in for a rough time. Chachi backs off, gets the Blasting Wand. He's already so far ahead of where Ruhuni was in that other game, and he's definitely uh, manifesting himself as a Tier 1 pick in the current metagame. So, Airwax has again found a member of Unicorns of Love. Unable to do anything with it this time around, and Kikis just body slams his way into the Baron Pit. The one hope for the Wolves here is Soren on this cast in. Incredible carry potential too. Anti mage. The wards. Kikis is going to get pinned against the wall and limited. Lines up that shot. Kikis does have explosive cast. Going to hold on to it as he flashes over the wall. And unicorns still hold on to their one and a half thousand gold lead. Yeah, Megatron cloak finished up on Cassiopeia here uh, on Power of Evil. He wants to go for that abyssal scepter because he knows. If there's any champion that's going to jump on you and get in range, it will be the Cassidy, and add a little extra magic damage allows you more time to dish out that continuous DPS on that Cassiopeia. You just want to stay alive long enough to get you burst, get your ulti stun off. Oh, I've seen this before. Pickle. I know how this ends. Yeah. With a dead tree, Chachi continues to chase. Doesn't hold on to, or doesn't use his flash, but down 20 CS, has the exact same item build, and, and just take wins notes. that trade. Take notes, everybody. There's one point in Q for Vizichachi, one point in E, and four already in the W. He's maxing that, and this is why you see that many snares come out in rapid succession. If you manage to land those Qs, get those snares up, get a whole lot of damage, a whole lot of crowd control. And the ever so tanky, Maokai is forced to play defensive, and usually when Maokais get kills is when they can go offensive and use their base damage to kill you, but if that's not enough, then you will drop dead. And Young Punk doesn't even get in range for an auto attack, and if he does, he has to expend his Twisted Advance, and that means he can no longer dodge anything, and he'll get popped. So very precarious position to be in. Oh, Unicorns of Love showing the rise is doing great amounts of work. Bardex is going to find himself in a lot of trouble, and he eats so many shots from the culling. He gets taken out, but we don't see any Golden Crowns delivered as Bard gets knocked under the tower. Unlimited takes a magical journey away, but the turret shot and poison follows through. Ends up trading one for one. 80 carries, four supports. And Soren's going to be able to get away this time round. Vardex just running too close to a bush with not enough vision. While the unicorns are ahead, they still have to be careful with face checking brushes. However, dropping the silver, not too bad. Utility based AD carry, pickaxe, BF, Avarice, definitely in a good spot in this game. So far, Freeze, BF, pickaxe, Hillisang's moving close. And they're gonna get themselves in trouble once again. Unicorns of Love give up a kill by walking to the dark, and they do it a second time. And they walk towards the same. They really like that brush, Trevor. Well, Sora now, he good. decides to jump in. Power of Evil gets the poison down. Wanted to sink a few more fangs, but opts against it. Yeah, Chachi doesn't like that rush too much. He has his eyes on the big wave, massed on the top lane. Look at all those minions, and 
Opening a wolf's not with the best lane control here. They're, they're trying to stop the bleeding, but every time something happens and you go back to the top lane, there's a massive wave of minions there. Vanishes in mere seconds. 78 CS to 81. The one so big CS advantage has just been nullified right now. So Unicorn should be happy with that. They still hold on to their lead. Dragon's coming out soon. I'm not sure I'd want to fight Unicorns with Sivir, Rise, and Cassio in the pit. Well, it's more of a question, do you fight them now or do you fight them later? And what do you prefer? My answer would be... Never. Never. <laughs> but obviously that's not an option if you want to try contest for the win here. Unicorn's going to secure their second tower quite uncontested, and there's that lack of wave clear from Copenhagen. They didn't have an option to defend because they had no wave clear to do so. Yeah, a lot of pressure coming out from the Wolves here. It doesn't go ahead. We might see some action at the next Dragon. Soren has been farming well. 120 CS, what have they just finished? Pretty nimble. Can jump around in these fights, has a decent amount of damage. Remember, only one tank on the Unicorns, only Gragas, and a lot of ways and means to just ignore him straight up from the Wolves as well. If they can get the engage in the flank, Rice can drop still, Cassiopeia can drop still. We're not we're not to that late game yet. I'm glad you said that because Hooney's build earlier was not tanky at all. Not the frozen heart sort of uh, tanky MR armor build that mm -hmm. we saw from Rises of old. It was full AP focus, even got a Luden's Echo in there for additional burst because of how many spells that Rise will rattle off. Yeah, Wood is definitely uh, here. Interesting to see how he enters that rise build. Soren wants some more farm. Wants the game to slow down somehow, but because yeah, scaling does go into the unicorn's favor here. We'll see whether they're unlimited. We'll see whether or not they can get into that AK crap. I do want to touch on the items really quickly again because the gold lead hasn't changed much. Rod's been stacking for Vizachachi and Soren. Dragons uncontested here by the Wolves. They've gone for option number two, fight later. Not fight today. Uh, Weevil's going to pick up some more. So it's just, it's an arms race. Until one team decides they're comfortable enough to look for a pick. Airwax is going. Airwax is going to jump on Chachi. Chachi's going to be able to get away. <laughs> Unscathed. Throws his hands in the air. Simply doesn't care. It's hard. It's hard for the Wolves to find an opening in this game right now. Freeze in the mid lane. Soren splitting in bot. More wave clear on your AD carry than your mid laner. So they have a problem here. They're looking for a bit of a dive. This is a good four man group here forcing somebody else. If they can get this tower, a really good momentum shift for the Wolves. Well, on the hunt gets popped. So, Tempered Fate gets thrown out, and the Black Shield blocks it away. Hillisang unaffected as the minions were the only things rooted. I heard the petrifying gaze, but nobody got stunned up. And a couple people going on a magical journey. No unicorns decide to follow through. So, Copenhagen Wolves get out, and they take the tower down bottom. Yeah, the unicorns will want to get another objective of this, but... That was fantastic from Kikis, as he knocks Young Buck into the team and secures a kill. Yeah, Kick is proving that not only is the League of Legends Pro, is also very good at pinball. Unlimited goes down. And a flash from Vizachachi gets the kill. Unicorns now still setting their sights on the inner turret. Soren's coming from the river, but I don't think he wants this fight. Yeah, he, he caught the tower on bottom and he said to his team, guys, stay passive, stay silent. Just try and clear the wave, but good opening from Unicorns. Really solid play by Kick is in. You said it in champs like you didn't like him on Nunu because he couldn't make any plays and well, I have to give you props for that one because Kikis on Gragas is making these plays, showing that he's mastered one of the, the higher tier jungles here and a good opening. And we saw earlier in the game how Kikis didn't connect with that body slam. So, of course, the slightly narrower width and explosion radius at the end, but this time around, over the wall, no less, chops down Young Buck where he stands. Young Buck's still trying to get tanky, but really just a mismatch of items. And Young Buck looking for that. Righteous Glory, Let's finish that, close the gap, get on top of the Rise, get on top of the Cassiopeia, shut them down immediately before they can dish out too much damage. Falling behind here, Airwax scouting and he has two kills, but he has to be careful that he doesn't follow his fence grenade path. Evelyn is incredibly squishy at times in the game, so you, you have to make use of a good ultimate to get that shield going and then the value of that. Hillisung. 
Finds that his tower does not have enough through sight. It's not a pink word on that. Well, Kikis gets rooted up. The barrel's actually going to knock Airwax to safety. Blue buff was not stolen, though. Keep that in mind. So. Still so tempting that portal. Airwax, unable to take it. It's difficult to not push the button. It is. Restraint is necessary. Maybe you do, do not some click the journey. Magical journeys don't have a happy ending. Healers then going low. Well, Freeze with the second culling of the game where almost every shot hits. He's sitting on that infinity edge and a very big CS lead over Vardag's Siva. But unfortunately, he doesn't get the kill. 30 seconds for next wagon. 5% extra movement speed. The Baron. For the Baron. I was Dragon. wrong. Dragon's a few minutes away. Icons, what are they? What do they do? <laughs> Who am I? I'm afraid I can't answer that question for you. We do see another early ages. Teams are learning this week. Something we didn't really see too much of last week. And we do see Chachi. He's fought Young snare, Two play. snares. Tower is Three low. snares. You see Bardag's Four and snares. coming in. I think we're trying, we're starting to identify why this champion Trevor is good and why you may be wise enough to pick up some Mercury Threads against this champion. Well, it's definitely going to be needed. Unicorns of Love get their sixth kill, their fourth tower. Dragon's up in two minutes. More just snares than a drum recital. <laughs> Broken 20 minutes on the clock. The unicorns are making the world dance to their beat. Soren jumps in for the team fight. Unlimited, can you save your teammates? Tempered Fate comes down and Vardex, I think spell shielded that one. Soren does not get away as Vardex gets one more auto attack. Big critical hit onto Airwax. The barrel throws him against the wall. Another barrel throws it down. Agony's embrace will not keep him alive. Vardags and Power of Evil get some more kills on the board. This is what we were expecting. This One is the bloodbath we were looking for. 8 in 2 right now. Unicorn 6,000 gold ahead. Vizichachi virtually untouched. And Power Evil, he doesn't even have to land the stun of Petrifying Gaze. He can just yeah, chase Evelyn there down there, flashes aggressively, and Tower's going down. No way clear. He's looking grim for the wolves, and. It's, They're it's, wondering, why did we leave Rise open? It's getting a whole lot more grim, because if you look at the itemization that's just been picked up, Archangels completed and instantly upgraded to Seraphs for Rise. Luden's Echo in the mid lane, Static Shiv and Vamsep to Sork Shoes as well. Like, Unicorns of Love have just spent all of that gold lead in a combat stat. as well. Really solid combat stat. Aegis finished to a Morgana. Everything works in unison. They're hitting quite quite decent power spikes in the mid game while they're they keep scaling for the late game at the same time. Wolves, they will need to make a pick a la Rocket earlier. Surprise the unicorns with their decision. Find the pick somehow. Take one guy down, then take the next guy down. Keep resetting somehow. Prevent yeah, the wolves or unicorns from pinning them down. And Dragon or Baron rather is live at this point. Very quick Baron as well. Remember that Cassiopeia rise. We throw somebody off guard. And a third dragon to boot. This one's actually the dragon, not the Baron. Uni Unicorns of Love can, can play any threat they want at this stage. They've got wave clear, they've got mobility, disengage, threat on Baron. It's just a matter of yeah. pick your way to win. Master of all trades, Jack of none at this point for the Unicorns. Oh, and you're that far ahead, you don't really mind. 8,000 gold. That was a one and a half. That's a flash route. Soren is there nowhere to be seen. If you can flash snare a Cassidy and take him down before it's time to jump out, things are getting pretty dire here. Unicorns, they want to snowball this game. They don't want to take it to the late game like we've been talking about. They want to end this game early. So let's see if they can get this inhibitor turret. 20 seconds left before Soren is able to spawn. Tempered Fate's available. It's going to lock up a few Unicorns of Love, but it's simply not enough. Youngbuck gets knocked forward and everyone gets knocked away. A kill on the board here for Copenhagen Wolves goes to Unlimited before Youngbuck is dropped. That's a double kill for Power of Evil. And Unicorns turn their attention to the tower. Hillisang reclaiming his title of European Sniper with another fantastic bind on Airwax there. Open up the possibility to take that inhibitor. Good part ultimate from Unlimited, but it was too little, too late. And the crowd is favoring the unicorns. I, I wasn't aware of that. I wonder I, why. I, I wasn't aware of that at all. Unicorns of love. 
11 to 3. They got super minions at 23 minutes. What a great position to be. Question again. This is why Bard Ultimate is good in theory because you can keep some guys uh, invulnerable, then take out the rest while the tower hits them. So you make the, the 5v4 fight or, or 5v2 potentially. But Vizichachi deals enough damage to go out. Shutdown goes on Unlimited as well. And then this Vine on Airwax just nailing the coffin right there. So, so good. And with the base cracked open, it's difficult to see how the Wolves are going to bounce back now. They've got to do so much to defend. And now I wonder, did the Wolves do the Unicorns a favor by banning Kog'Maw and Varus? Hard to see why not. Especially when you look at the pick ban and you think that, yes, Bard was the last pick, but we've seen multiple times Spell Shield and Black Shield preventing that Tempered Fate from doing anything. Yeah. It's very hard to do... Uh Use that spell efficiently. This is why I think this lane swap... Uh... Oh, Young Park is in so much trouble. The stun does connect, but he's got so many unicorns to cut him down. If you take the magical journeys, bring your buddies for the group discount, and then it might actually work out. Unlimited has to flash out here. You see him in trouble. Another magical journey. Unicorns deciding to follow suit. You get a journey. You get a journey. Everybody, Everybody. gets a journey. Cosmic Binding connects, Dark Binding does not, so Unlimited able to get away. But Unicorn's now with the threat of Baron. It looks like Let's they're going to stop this DPS right here. Cassiopeia, good at Baron's rise, fantastic at Baron's. Watch that Baron drop down. Oh, by the time the Wolves get there, it'll be taken. Look at the Super Minions in the base as well. Temper Fates down. Baron secured. Everyone take the journey. That's one and two, and into the Raptor camp they go. Power of Evil, 7-0-2, as he chops down Bard. And the Super Minion's got a Nexus turret. Yeah, I'm a bit flabbergasted here, Trevor. Help me out. Not too much to analyze. I think <laughs> I think these very graphic images speak for themselves <laughs> at this point. Caution uh, is advised when watching. Oh! Soren unable to make that Rift Walk work. Sang was chasing. We did actually see there was... Zero barons for unicorns up until that very first one. However, that was just in the two previous games. Is Hillisang? Is he soaring, Cassidy? Oh, the flash away. Soren's still alive. Hillisang's chasing. I believe Hillisang doesn't connect with the dark binding, but unreal. Observers, go back to the real thing. <laughs> go back to what's important. Flash Thank over you. the wall. Ah, oh, Hillisang doesn't have flash. I think he would have used it. He would have. He would have got the kill if he did a flash. I believe. Soren finally finding himself. A long battle, goes back home, back to his base, only to find it in ruins. Because the Unicorns took down two inhibitors. A decently sized wave, ready to uh, go for that third. Super minions already in the bottom half of the map. Knock, and that knock, turret knock. is gone. There's a Chachi even TPing in here. This is most likely the final fight, Krepo. 13,000 gold in the lead. Kick is, he's had magical barrels already. 0, zero 9 So I think charging up that Rift or Chachi is now moving forward here on the hunt. Kickus has gone over, and there's one more barrel. Bardex gets the kill as Youngbuck is trying to find the support Morgana, and that's just not enough. Cosmic Binding goes wide. Power of Evil is poisoning the Copenhagen Wolves. They get one more tower, and this is the last in here. You talked about it earlier, how Bardex did so little of his team's damage, but this time I can't blame him. So much damage <laughs> from Chachi, from Power of Evil, and I'm just going to let the crowd finish this one off. Tempered Fate goes down, holds the last tower for a few more seconds with the Unicorns of Lover onto the Nexus. And they destroy Copenhagen Wolves in 27 minutes. That's what happens when Rise goes 2-0 in the landing phase. Yeah. A lot of snares. Go! <laughs> and kickers hit every single barrel. Power of Evil, 704 on Cassio. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see the unicorns revitalized like this. I really am not a fan of when teams become predictable. Yes, the style might work, but I like to vary it up. So once you perfect the style, once you know it works, once you know you can do it, switch it up, especially in this season earlier, because by playoffs, you want to be ready with a mix of different strategies. And yet again, you pointed it out earlier. The other side is Morgana. They're so solid. Yeah. Just a foundation that the Unicorns need to build on. When you watch a game like that from Unicorns of Love, 
every single individual player performed exceptionally. Chachi did great, Kickers did great. Power of Evil cleaned up because there was never any pressure to do more. And Vardax and Hillisung dodged every tempered fate that was important, that could be game changing with the Spell Shield and the Black Shield. So just a great team performance in the flavor that got the Unicorns of Love all those fans to begin with. Don't be mistaken, guys. Bard may have a 0% win rate, but there is still hope for you out there. Just keep on believing. Please. <laughs> I have to. <laughs> well, definitely, unfortunately, not working out for Unlimited this time around. Um, Unicorns of Love, much better than week one. Yeah. Much more decisive. Copenhagen Wolves, much less so. Um, I think this is one of those cases where they fall victim to their composition as well. When you're forced to lane swap to at least get through the early game. And then I think it all boils down to that crucial play where they went for it. Yeah, we see it. Visit Shashi on that rise. The bands were Kogmo and Varus. And now removing any option to poke for the unicorns. They said Copenhagen Wolf said, well, we want to fight. And may have been the wrong decision. It, it also makes you wonder if they were expecting a different team composition. If the Copenhagen Wolves ban out the poke, assuming Unicorns will play a different style because you mentioned it in the game how maybe they're regretting leaving that rise open. Maybe they're regretting letting Chachi get his hands on that champion because it was first pick Cassio and then I think second rotation rise. Um, what a game changer. Now, as we've seen before with champions that do really well in their initial weeks, there are ways to counter them. We saw Ash do relatively well in week one and get absolutely bodied early today by uh, Forgiven. Just got chain ganked over and over and over. And why? Because Ash doesn't have that much mobility. Rise also lacks that mobility to an yeah. extent. Has more defensive appeal for himself, but at the same time, could have gotten punished, but he got teleported on. Started a snowball for Chachi. He was down in CS, as you said, but you know, if you can take some, some exactly. kills, get that tier catalyst going. Well, he definitely did, and once Chachi got going, it was Kikis that helped 